What if I told you that what you know about how the signal propagates in a printed circuit board is not entirely true? In this video, we're going to discuss how signals propagate in PCB and most importantly, what happens in the instant when the signal is propagating through the transmission line. One common way to think about signal transmission is in terms of voltage and current. We often compare the flow of current in a conductor to water flowing through pipes. This analogy is helpful for building simple circuits. But does it suffice to describe what really happens inside the PCB? A more in-depth approach is to think about signal propagation in terms of fields. This requires revisiting the fundamentals, the Maxwell's equations. Without delving deeply into the math, the key takeaway here is the fourth of Maxwell's equations, the Ampere-Maxwell law. This law tells us that a circulating magnetic field is produced by an electric current and by a time-varying electric field. Conversely, a circulating magnetic field generates an electric current and a time-varying electric field. These phenomena are represented by two terms, the electric current density J and the displacement current density, the latter being on the right side of the equation. The first term, the electric current density, is often described as water flowing through pipes. The second term, the displacement current density, might be more familiar to you when thinking about the current in a capacitor. Let me explain. It's often assumed that when a capacitor is charged with a DC signal, no current flows through it. However, with an AC signal, especially at high frequencies, the capacitor appears to conduct electric current. This is not true. In reality, no electric current flows through the plates and dielectric of the capacitor as this would contradict the definition of a dielectric. What happens instead, and this is Maxwell's actual contribution to Ampere's law, is that when the capacitor is charging, the voltage change across it causes a displacement of charges within its dielectric. In the dielectric, bound charges align towards the capacitor's plates, positive charges on one side and negative charges on the other. This movement, which Maxwell called displacement, creates an apparent polarization current through the capacitor, known as the displacement current. Now, considering these concepts of conduction current and displacement current, how do they connect to PCB design? Let's consider this model of a PCB. The metal conductors are shown in yellow on the top and bottom sides. At the top, we have the signal trace connected to the load on the right. On the bottom side, there's the return plane for the signal, also connected to the load. The green layer beneath the signal trace is the dielectric material, insulating the two metal conductors. This forms the transmission line for signal transmission. In this model, the two metal conductors separated by a dielectric material can be compared to a capacitor. This comparison helps us grasp what happens when a signal is sent through the transmission line. Moreover, since these are conductors, they naturally have inductance. To simplify, we can view the PCB as a sequence of small capacitors and inductors. Now, what happens when a signal is injected into the transmission line? The propagating signal, especially at the edge, where the electric field shifts from low to high, creates a displacement current, forming a current wavefront. In this situation, we see Maxwell's equations in action. First, there's the conduction current, which includes the signal current on the top trace and the return current on the bottom. Second, we have the displacement current, which arises from the changing electric field at the front of the signal wave. Now, because we've learned these things, Here's the most surprising part. Until the signal gets to the end of the line, it doesn't know what's at the end. There could be a load that uses the signal, an empty line with nothing connected, or a short circuit due to a wrong connection. As the signal travels along the transmission line, it responds only to the instantaneous impedance it encounters at each specific point. 
What happens when the signal reaches the end of the transmission line? This outcome is determined by how well the connected load's impedance matches the transmission line's characteristic impedance. If there's a mismatch, meaning the load's impedance is different from the lines, the signal will reflect back. On the other hand, if the load's impedance perfectly matches the line's impedance, there won't be any signal reflection. This concept is crucial for the entire journey of the signal along the line. At any point where the signal encounters a change in impedance, it can cause a reflection of the signal. This is just one of the many interesting things we talk about in our premium content. You can start your journey now and master printed circuit board design with the PCB Hackers community.